Okay, let's start off with running. You guys know the drill. And then punches. Keep your feet moving. I don't care what punches you do. I do jab, cross, hook, uppercut just because it makes sense to my brain from a warm up point of view. <clears throat> but as long as your hands are up and your feet are moving, I don't really care what punches you do. Okay, then feet, you're here. Step out and in. Something back there is squeaking. knees. Now when you do this, think about keeping this one bent. It helps you keep your balance and it puts more stress on that leg so you're doing more work. Other side. ladder steps. So visualize a ladder or if you have an agility ladder and you want to put it on the floor, but you're stepping through the rungs and then picking your knee up. So you got to pick your knees up. Even if you have a flat, like a agility, my agility ladder is plastic slats with a, like a, not a cord, but it's flat, just a flat rope. And if you don't pick your feet up, you get them caught. Kicks, front, side, back. And if you get your feet caught and you screw the rope up, then you have to do more because you don't get to cut your time down because you messed up the ladder. Okay, so what you need to do now is you need to turn the video off and start the music playing. And while the music is playing, you're going to do two more rounds. 30 seconds each, running, punches, in and out steps, knees, ladder steps, kicks. Two times through, 30 seconds each. Now when you're done, turn the video back on and come back to me to stretch. So to stretch, reach up. Over to one side. Other side. Put your hands here. Clasp your fingers together. Push your shoulders back. And lift your hands. And then reach for the floor. Over to one side, grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. Now with your feet here, relatively close together, turn, I have both heels on the floor, my knees are straight, pull your chin down, your chest down to your front knee. Normally we do this stretch much more extended, but with your feet close together, you get more of a stretch in your hamstring. Make sure you keep your chin up. Then push back and stretch your hip flexor. Mid center, toes straight forward, knees out. Grab your ankle, pull your chest to your knee. So chin is up, then turn your feet, keep the knees straight, keep your chin up, chest down towards the front knee. Push back, stretch your hip flexor. 
Then have a seat. Put your bottoms of your feet together. And then take your hands and tuck them right up against your back here so that you're not end up, you don't want to scrunch your back like this. I actually, my feet are sliding, so I'm going to put them against the, chair, the table and then put my hands here to keep my back straight. Now the sun is in my eyes, so they're closed and push your knees down. And then you have to put your feet out, come over to one side. So what I'm doing here is my ribs are coming down towards my thigh, They're coming to the side. Then you're going to come up and you're going to turn the front of your chest towards your knee and reach out and grab again. And same thing on the other side. Turn towards your knee. Now we're going to reach to the center and when you do this, I don't want you to do this. Okay, I want you to lift your chin and push your chest forward so your back is flat and reach your elbows toward the floor. Okay, if you've got that and it's easy, pull your feet in closer and still reach your elbows to the floor. And then if you need more, put your feet together and put your elbows on the floor on the outside. And pull your feet in. Heels are on the floor. Rock back and forth. Okay, this is easier. Feet apart, knees apart. Toes pointed straight forward, feet closer together is harder. Put your hands down. Straighten out your legs. And up. Okay, three exercises. Um, I'm going to show them to you. And then again, I want you to stop the video, turn the music on, and do each one of them for a minute. Okay, the first one, I'm going to, I think you can see me okay. The first one are inchworm push ups. So you do the inchworm push ups. You start here, you bend down, you put your hands on the floor, you walk them out to the plank. You do a push up. You walk them back in, you stand all the way up. Walk them down. Okay, you can do them on your knees if you want. In either case, your back has to be flat and your chin has to be up. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is toe touch sit-ups. <clears throat> so you're gonna start here on your back. I'm straight out. I'm gonna come up. My right hand is gonna touch my left foot. Then my left hand touches my right foot. So opposite foot down. Okay, and the third one is a lunge front kick. So what I want you to do is I want you to step back to the lunge and then ideally right from here up to the front kick and back down on the same side. So ideally your foot is only touching in the back. Okay, if that doesn't work for you, here, 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 and down. Okay, so like I said, stop the video, turn the music on, a minute each, into our push-ups, toe touch sit-ups, and lunge front kick. Okay, so this month we're working on intensity. Um, we're gonna do some kicks right now, and then work on adding intensity to them. Okay, so the first one, grab a chair for this, to start at least. Okay, so the first one is gonna be a side kick. I want you to hold your chair to start because I want you to look at your standing foot and turn it towards your chair and then pick your other foot up like this as if it was on a step in front of you. So if my target's there, my knee is chambering 90 degrees off the target. I'm going to turn my butt and my heel towards the target and kick. And when I do that, this you can see better from this angle. I'm not just putting my foot out, but I'm actually pushing from my hip. Okay, so the push, the rotation is where your power comes from, and the, po the power is what's gonna give you the intensity in your kick. So let's do some on each side. I actually leave my foot facing in the same direction as my knee when I chamber, and then when I turn my hip and my butt to throw the kick, I turn the foot. So one, 
two, three, four, five. Now let's do the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, then you can get rid of your chair. Okay, the next one we're going to do is a spin axe kick, but we're going to start with the regular axe kick. I'm going to write... Why is down low so you can see my feet? Okay, so when I do a regular axe kick, chambers like a front kick, knee comes up, comes across your body, opens, drops down, heel hits the target. Okay, so when I do a spin axe kick, so when I do the front, the axe kick, my knee is facing my target when I chamber. So when I spin, what tends to happen is people spin here and pick up their knee here. Well, if you're doing a front kick chamber, and your knee is there, that means your kick is gonna be there. My knee still has to be here. Now, if you look at my feet right here, don't twist them up. Right here, you're way off balance. So I'm gonna start here, turn, drag, pick my foot up so it's facing the target, throw my ax kick. Okay, so turn, drag, kick. So that's two, three, four, five. Okay, then we'll do the other side. Actually, I'm gonna turn and do the other side here so that if you're confused, looking at me, you can follow along with me. So in my right guard stance, I'm gonna kick with my back foot, which is the left one. Spin, drag, Pick my chamber up towards my target and kick. One, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so that's two kicks. The third one is gonna be a pump instep kick or skip instep kick. Last week, we worked on an instep kick. This week, we're gonna add a pump to that. So if I wanna close distance, I'm gonna pump with my back foot and kick with the front one. Just as if I was throwing a pump front kick, but we practiced the, the uh, instep kick last week. We practiced coming up. So your foot, your toes are pointed, you're kicking either with the top of your foot or the base of your shin, it's a groin kick. So I'm coming forward, pick up your back leg, switch feet. Pick up the back leg, switch feet. If you're gonna follow along with me, I pick up my back leg, now the other one kicks. Pick up your back leg, that's the chamber, other one kicks. So you're gonna go pump kick, pump kick, pump, kick, pump, kick. Okay, then what I want you to do is I want you to get a partner. Okay, and that partner is going to be the person who's giving you the intensity level that you're working with. Okay, so if you're an adult or you're doing this, get one of your kids to be your partner, they will get a huge kick out of it. You can either have them call out numbers from one to 10, or you can have them write them down and hold them up, whatever entertains them. But you're gonna do these kicks on a scale of intensity from one to 10. So one is no intensity, okay? It doesn't mean sloppy karate. All the parts still have to be there, okay? But there's no power. There's no rotation, there's no speed. I know I have trouble taking out the rotation particularly. But I want you to think about when we're doing it without intensity, practicing the technique just setting your foot on the target. No, not hard enough that if you hit anything, it would do any damage, okay? So then the person's gonna tell you what intensity level. One is no intensity, 10 is intense as you can be without making any noise. I don't want any key-ups in this drill. I just want you to throw the kick with intensity so that I can see 
or who's ever watching you can see that if you actually hit the target, you would do some damage. So each kick, 10 times, um, you have to do 10 times on each side, 10 times total, 10 side kicks, 10 spin axe kicks, 10 pump instep kicks, each one somewhere on that intensity level. And don't start at one and go up to 10, mix them up. Go one, nine, seven, three, 10. So go up and down. Okay, two open hand forms right now. Action karate form four and action karate form eight. We're gonna pull a few techniques out of each of those. So from action karate form four, what we're pulling out is star block set. So when you do star block set, you're in a toes forward or ideally toes in horse stance. Okay, it's not toes out. Toes out would be as if your target was to the side of you, but here your target's in the front. So ideally your horse stance toes in and knees out. For a lot of you guys, what happens when you toe in is it forces your knees in or it forces your butt out. Okay, if that's what happens, just put your toes straight forward. If you can, toe in a little bit, knees are out. So we start here, up, in, out, touch down, back, push down. Okay, so you've got five blocks here, up, in, out. Touch is a chamber for down and back is a chamber for push down. Okay, so we're gonna do each one, there's five, and we're gonna build up an intensity on each one. So level one intensity, level two, level three, level four, level five. And then we'll work them back up. Level five, or level 10 actually, level eight, level six, level four, level two. Okay, so I want you to go up and down through a star block set like that. Then we're gonna pull a technique out of action karate form eight. So from action karate form eight, we're going to take out chop. Is that what I want? Um, I'm gonna chop here. Okay, so my right foot is forward, left foot is back, chopping with my left hand, and I'm gonna unwind and chop with my right hand. Okay, so here, Chop left, chop right. Chop left, chop right. See what my, I'm not stepping. My feet are starting. If I'm facing, I'll do this so that you can follow along with me. Okay, face in the same direction that I am. So face that way. Twist here. Chop with your left hand. Now you don't have to step. All you have to do is unwind your feet and chop with your right hand. Wind up, chop left unwind, chop right. Okay, so we're gonna do that five times, cranking up the intensity. So level one, level three, level five, level seven, and level 10. I might have skipped a number there. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is I want you to take action karate form four and action karate form eight, and I'll do them with you. I'm gonna do them at around probably level three or level four. Okay, so action karate form four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, up, in, out, touch, down, back, push down. And then action karate form eight. One, two, three, four, five, six. I gotta back up or it's not gonna work. One, two, three, Four, one. Okay, here's the spin axe kick that we practiced in the form. I mean, in the drills. Your target's there. So don't chamber your knee here. Come all the way to here, chamber it to the front so that you're chambering towards your target. Hammer. Now this is the other piece that we just practiced. I'm gonna hop up, right foot's in front, left hand chops, then I unwind, and right hand chops. And that's all, as far as I want you to go right now. Okay, so I want you to take both of those forms, 
and I want you to do them three times at three different intensity levels. Okay, don't go in order. Don't go three, five, seven. Start really low. Do one really high. Do one in the middle or start in the middle. Go low, go high. Okay, so three times all the way through action karate form four and three times through action karate form eight up to here with your intensity levels moving up and down. Okay, two self-defenses. The first one is a little bit hard to show you in the air, but somebody's grabbing your wrist on the same side, okay? So if they're grabbing this wrist, they're grabbing it with the hand on the same side. It's not across the body. I'm gonna trap, pull them off balance, and then my hand is gonna come up this way. Because what I wanna do is I wanna attack this side. I always wanna attack the outside of their wrist. If you're doing cobra, you're coming across, so you're attacking the outside of the wrist. This is reverse cobra. So you trap here, you pull them off balance, you come up the outside, grab their wrist, get them into this 90 degree position, and turn their wrist over. Okay, so we start here. I don't want any trouble. They grab your hand, pull out of the way, come back, attack the outside of the wrist, wrist lock, pump, a punch, kick, cover out. Okay, so if they're facing, it's facing the other way, so you can do this with me. I don't want any trouble. They grab your hand, trap their hand, pull them off balance, step back in, attack the outside of their wrist, punch, kick, cover out. Okay, the other one that we're gonna do, I need my coupon for this one. Okay, this one is, from Star Block Set, okay? Um, touch down from Star Block Set. But what I want you to think about is I'm chambering touch down, okay? Someone comes up behind me, they're gonna do an underarm bear hug. So they got their arms wrapped around me, they're trying to pick me up off their feet. My arms are free, okay? So I don't want any trouble, they grab. First thing I'm gonna do is drop my weight so I can plant my feet. Then I'm gonna, if I right here strike, their legs are behind mine, there's nothing to hit. So I gotta scoot my butt sideways, chamber here. This is touch, down, strike the inside of their leg. Punch, kick, cover up. Okay, if you are practicing this with someone, if there is a point on your coubaton, don't hit them hard. Even if your coubaton's dull, if you're practicing with somebody, just put it there gently. Make sure you can find the spot. Don't actually hit them hard. And like I said, if your kubaton is a point like mine, don't hit them at all. Okay, so I'm here. Hands are up. I don't want any trouble. Somebody grabs around. My hands are out. First, you gotta walk. Make sure it's somebody you're supposed to be defending you. Drop your weight. Scoot your butt. Touch down. Strike. Punch. Kick. Actually, they're behind me. So I'm just gonna be, I don't want any trouble. Drop my weight, scoot my butt, touch down, punch, kick, cover up. Okay, so I want you to practice both of those with somebody. Remember not, when we're practicing self-defense, you can go really fast if you want to. You can be really loud if you want to. You can do your strikes really hard if you want to, to this close to your target, but I don't want you hitting the person with any intensity at all. Okay, we're starting off with one stick. We're gonna do blood cup on the left side. I'll do, we're gonna, we started this last week, we're gonna do all of the left side today. So you start it with it in your right hand, all the way at the bottom, switch, left hand is on top, so you have empty space at the bottom, so you can use the other end of the weapon. I'll do it in both directions. We start here, blood cup, courtesy, step back, Cover your head, make sure it's covered. This is not covered. Cover your head, step forward. Strike high, low, high. Orbit, when you do the orbit, it's like you're wiping the sweat off your forehead. Strike, stick keeps spinning in the same direction. Your left foot, it sticks in your left hand, your left foot's gonna follow it. Step back, cover your head again. Step forward with your left foot and strike down. Okay, so the first three strikes in this set are ticks. Tag, tag, tag. The orbit and the last strike come all the way through. 
Okay, so I start here, leg cup, courtesy, step back, cover your head, step forward, high, low, high, orbit strike, comes around, it hits, it orbits again, but this time your foot comes with it, cover your head, step forward, strike down. Okay, that is for beginners. Um, so in the kids class, white belts and blue belts, if you're a green, if red belt in the kids class, you need to be practicing it, tongue sudo, white, orange, blue. Um, then everybody else, bring it up, needs to get their other stick. We're gonna do the other side of the bottom today. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. So I'm mirrored to you. You have the stick in your left hand out and the stick in your right hand tucked up against your side. So I'm striking down, left, right, left. And I'm gonna bring it back to this side. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left, and back. Okay, then I'm gonna bring it back here. So now follow with me if this is easier for you. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left, and back. Left, right, left left and back okay i would like you to practice both of those with somebody and actually you're going to some of you are going to say well there's nobody in my house who knows this that's good because then you have to teach it to them and the best way to learn something is to teach it to someone else so i want you to practice those if you're a beginner you're practicing just the left side of blood cup everybody else is practicing blood cup left side and the two stick set left side bottom Okay, um, gup, bow form. So if you're in the Karate Kids class, all the red belts are doing this. Tongue should o, um, two and one straight brown belts, red belts, apprentices are doing this. Okay, so right now today what we're working on is a technique that's part, of, it's probably the hardest move in the form. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start in right jungle chassis. And I will do this both ways so you can follow along. I start the right jungle chassis and I end in a right knee. Okay, so I'm gonna pick my right foot up, swing it around, put it back down in the same spot, and put my left knee down. Okay, it goes a little bit faster than that in the form. In the form, what I do is I turn, I kick the right foot up, I put it down, I put my left knee down. So it goes this way. Don't slam your knee on the floor, it hurts a lot if you do. Okay, I'm here, right foot comes up, comes around, I put the right foot back down, left knee drops to the floor. So I'm going from a right front stance to a right kneel. Start here, up, spin, left knee down. Here, up, spin, left knee down. Okay, then you're gonna get your bow or your stick if you're working in the house, and you're gonna put it in your hands the way that we always do. Right hand palm up, left hand palm down. I am going to take and strike across so that my left hand is under my right ribs. I'm gonna bring it up. It's gonna, it goes over my head when I do this, but if I do it over my head, you're not gonna be able to see. Bring it here, switch my grip. So my right hand is down and the left one is up. And then I'm gonna bring the left hand, the right hand to my left ribs. Bring it up, switch it back to normal hand grip, left hand, right ribs. Bring it up, switch your hand, right hand, left ribs okay so when i do this it actually comes up over my head and if you watch me do this at speed i hold it between my fingers as i come around I, if you have a death grip on it all the way around it doesn't flow nicely but if you're doing it fingers i tend to do fingers on one hand and a little bit more of a grip on the other hand you don't want it flying across the room either Okay, so I start here, normal grip, left hand on right ribs. Comes up, over my head, switch my hands, bring it down, right hand, left ribs, bring it back. So left hand, right ribs, up, and switch. So once I've switched, my hands are in the opposite grip. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this together. So I'm starting here in the right front stance. Bow is, in a proper grip, 
left hand on my right wrist. I do that jump that we did, and at the same time, I switch the bow to the other side. And come back, up, switch, jump, and land. Back, up, switch, jump, and land. Like if you've not done this before, you might have to run the vid back, rewind the video and do it six or eight or ten times. That's fine. That's after learning how to handle the bow without tripping yourself up on it. That's probably the next hardest thing in the form. So spend a lot of time on that this week.